that's a good boy. Oh, well, hello there. It's Jeff Chen again. I've got another tutorial for you. Um, I've been painting with a few people online and I've noticed that there are some tools that they aren't really using that could really, really help speed up their process. So I thought I'd make another video and show you guys some of my favorite tools and how I use them. Uh, so here we go. Six Photoshop tools you might have missed. All right, so here we are. Um, our first tool, liquify. So we have our just you know just a piece that I finished a, a few weeks ago, and not, nothing special. Um, <laughs> got a piece here that I'll show you guys um, what liquify can do. Liquify is a great tool for making adjustments on paintings without really damaging your artwork. So I'll show you, I'll just show you guys what it is. You go to filter, liquify, and then this tool comes up. Um, and what this does is you can make adjustments like push this eye around, push the nose around. You know, you can make minor adjustments and um, basically kind of mold your piece into the way you want it to be. Uh, there's a few different uses for this. So you can, there's a, a face, a face over liquify, which helps you identify faces within your painting. You can make eyes bigger, smaller, you know, raise its height, lower it. And that's, th this only really works for like photos or like um, kind of semi-realistic paintings. So you can't like expect to draw a stick figure and like expect it to, f to find the face, but it's really useful for adjusting faces that you've drawn, make them smile, and kind of frown and all that. Um, apart from that, yeah, you can make adjustments like say if I wanted this hair to be a bit more puffy I have it selected on this tool, Forward Warp tool, and it can just warp my piece into shape. If something's a little bit off in perspective, um, I can move that or something if I want. Move it back. There's also some other great tools in here, like you can just directly make some areas larger, like this. So if you had a head that's too small, just make it larger with this. But we'll go back because that head is pretty damn fine. So you can make it smaller as well. <laughs> of course you don't want to mess around with it as much as I have but I'm showing you like the extremes of what each tool can do. And another great thing I use is masking certain areas out before you start warping. So this is to create a mask, this tool right here, and this tool here is to erase and I'll show you guys how to use that. So say I wanted to move this snake head around, I'll mask this area out and what this will do is it will keep this lady from warping with the snake now so if I want to push the snake around I can't touch wherever I have it masked so I can freely just move the snake without worrying about um, warping the, the girl I can also erase the mask so like if I wanted to for some reason move the eyes with the snake I can do that now Pull her face out. Beautiful. So our next tool is pretty handy for both photographers and digital painters. Uh, it's content aware. It's filling with content aware, basically. <laughs> We've got another, you know, just another piece I've worked on in the past year. This, you know, see Jeff Chen designs. Um, yeah. So what this tool does is, you can extend your image. Even if you, yeah, let, me, let me show you guys. Say I wanted to make this image larger on this side and I didn't want to paint everything again, like paint in those areas. And I didn't want to stretch the original image either. Um, I make sure the image is on one flat layer here. See layer zero, right click, fill, content aware. And what this does is the computer will generate what they assume will be in the background here. And let's have a look at what happens. This might fail. It could very well fail. Oh, there we go. So it's never perfect, but you can see like it filled in the bow for me, filled in the gradients, the background and all that. It has a few sparks here. You know, just a bit of editing can fix that up. Uh, some better editing. But you get what I mean. That's basically what Content Aware does. It's very important to make sure all your stuff is on one layer before you do that. So. If you have everything split up, it won't like content aware stuff from other layers. You have to flatten it all 
either um, by merging the layers or just flatten the whole image and then do it. And yeah, it's a really handy tool. Um, perfect for setting up things like thumbnails for maybe YouTube thumbnails that aren't in the right aspect ratio. And then you just fill it in to fit perfectly. There you go, content aware. All right, layers. Now, I know a lot of you guys will be like, I use layers, but you know what? I've seen just as many people miss out on layer modes. Like, it kind of blows my mind. <laughs> layer modes are so essential to um, speeding things up and making adjustments without really harming your piece. Um, I'll show you guys. So I've got this this concept here that I did a while ago. I've done like a a quick uh, flat layer of gray just to mask out where I where I can uh, touch with clipping masks. I hope that you guys are using this. I actually don't explain this, but if you guys want to know about clipping masks, just I don't know, let me know or just search on YouTube. But yeah, I'll show you guys a few that I use. Multiply, one of my favorite ones. Um, you can multiply with colors. And what this does is, it it's pretty much what it says it does. It multiplies whatever color you have here selected with whatever is on the page at the moment. And remember, I have this clipped to this layer at the moment, so I can't touch anything out here. It can only affect over here. So you saw that that red I did here is a lot darker than here, than what I've picked in the color picker. That's because multiply is multiplying this red with this gray at the moment. So if I picked a really light blue here, it won't be light because it's still multiplying with the gray. And this is great for concept art if you want to, or digital painting, if you want to add a light direction or a light source while keeping things very consistent. Let me show you guys real quick like this. I'll just do the head so like we don't waste too much time here. So you guys can go back to your studies as usual. And then of course you can just adjust the opacity, the fill, whatever, to bring it back down. But it keeps everything consistent. And what's great about it is that you can adjust whatever's in here at the moment with layers. You can just, if you don't like certain areas, just erase it out, you can smooth it out. And it just gives you a really consistent light source. So use multiply. Uh, apart from multiply, what else do I use? Let's go down this list. Color dodge. Color dodge, uh, let's not do that, let's do another layer. Set this to color dodge. Color dodge is great for adding some light to your uh, your image. And I'm sure you've seen it from Ross Draws. It's, it's his thing, this is like, we should just call it the Ross Draws uh, layer mode. But basically, yeah, it adds light to your image without affecting the shadows too much. I think that's what it does. That's kind of how I've been using it. Um, a little trick I like to use with color dodge is, uh, I'll show you guys. So I'll make another color dodge layer. We'll hide the one I had before, fill it all black, and then apply the white, whatever light you want to use. And I feel like this has made it more consistent and not act as strange as when you have just white applied um, with color dodge. So fill your page with black and then start adding the whites in for wherever you want your light source to wherever you want to add some light. So I'm just doing it real quick for you guys but that's something I use. You can always adjust it again. It's a... Uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like with this color thing and some shadow I had before. Okay, so this is what I had before, I'm adding some light with color dodge. Yeah, there you go. A nice consistent way to add light. And let's go down this list a little bit more. Overlay. Overlay is great for you can use it to add colors, um, make colors more vibrant. Um, that's well. These are the ways I use it, by the way. Like, and I'm skipping some of the ones that I don't really use. I'm just showing you the ones I like for digital painting. 
So for example, say I really liked what's going on here, like these colors here, but I wanted this green to be more vibrant with where it touches the light here. I can color pick this, pick a more saturated color, and just apply softly a bit of that color in overlay mode to make it more vibrant. See a bit of that vibrance coming up? See it's nice and dull, but now it's nice and vibrant. Same for here, we can do the same. Pick a lighter color from, I'll show you guys what I did, that was kind of quick. Okay, so you picked your color, make it more vibrant, and just apply it in there. You can even mix other colors in if you want. Things can get kind of funky that way. You have like a little bit less control, but you might find something fun. Um, you can pick like a really textury brush, and swipe it across certain areas get some cool effects and raise it out get a kind of painty effect while not changing too much of what you had underneath um, that's overlay but make sure when you use overlay you know that you're affecting your values what does that mean let me show you real quick put that there okay so this was my image before overlay and after overlay. You see that little bit of um, change there? It changed my values. So keep that in mind. Um, get rid of that. So that's overlay. What else do I use here? Color, of course. So say I had a black and white piece like this. this uh, okay. Oh, let's do this. Say I had a black and white piece like this, and I wanted to add some color on this guy. Color is a great mode to do that if you figured out the uh, value distribution on your character design already. And what this does is it applies colors onto values and doesn't change what that value is. What does that mean? Say my target color was this kind of pinkish red. It'll only really appear wherever that value allows it to. So you can see that I got a darker red here instead of that pink. That's because the value was affecting the color, unlike overlay where the color affects the value. So whatever color you want to apply, just keep in mind what value you're trying to put it on and keep that in mind. Darker the color, the more saturated it is. That's normally the rule. It's not always right, but just keep that in mind. So uh, yeah, I think colors, color mode is a great way to color your image. I highly recommend you use that way. I also have a color tutorial. Um, that was my first video on here. I'll have a link in the description. You guys, you guys can check it out and see how I normally color my artwork to give it a bit more vibrance and a more interesting look. But yeah, there you go. And I'll just, just to make sure that it doesn't affect the values. There you go, see? Values don't change. And there you go, layer modes. You should really use them. I highly recommend it. Use it. All right, guys, let's talk um, gradient maps. This was something I touched on in that color tutorial I mentioned earlier. And I thought I should probably explain a little bit more information about it and show you guys how to make your own gradient maps as well. So I've got good old snake lady here again, ready for some editing. Um, so I've also selected her face just to save time. And here we go, let's create an adjustment layer, gradient map. And what gradient maps does is that it affects your values from darkest to lightest within this range here. So this is the darkest black, this is the whitest white. And I'll show you guys how this works. If I change this black to a blue now, you'll see all the black areas in here have a bit of a blue. If I change it to white, then the whole thing should turn white. There you go, because now I have no black in that area I had selected. It's all white. So we'll put it back to black, and just for like clarity's sake, let's change white to black, and have a guess what would happen. What do you guys think would happen? If I change this to black, oh, it all turns black because now we have no more white 
in our selected area. So this is it's the same for any anything in between here. If I add a a red here, now anything that's closer to black becomes red. If I add a blue here, now anything closer to white will become blue. And just messing around with gradient maps will kind of give you a better information uh, idea of it, but basically it gives you a smooth transition from darkest value to lightest value within this range here. So how do we use this to create a skin tone? Um, well, first of all, start with your midtones, apply a skin color in here, and you'll kind of see where this is heading. So I've added a skin tone here. I've realized that a lot of my whites my, a lot of my, my blacks have kind of disappeared. That's because I have an, an even lighter value here that doesn't follow this smooth transition from black to white. So what can I do when I add that color in here? If I move it slightly towards the white where it should be, so see how this, this looks a lot smoother now from black to white? That's where it belongs. That's where this value kind of belongs, around here. So I've added a skin color in. Um, I want to add some, maybe some blood to her face so the darker areas get a bit of that reddish tint towards it. We can do that. We can add like a blue shadow maybe. Sorry about that noise as well. I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, if, you guys, if you guys know, let me know how to fix that stupid noise. There we go. Um, and we can just keep pushing this around until we kind of get a skin color we like. Maybe we can make this slightly more red. And the good thing about this is you can just keep adjusting it as you go. And push things wherever you want it to go. Um, and yeah, as I said earlier, this affects your values. If you don't want it to affect your values, but you want these kind of colors in that kind of value range, just change this to color mode. There you go. Now you have this value for your face. See you, buddy and adding these colors in on top of those values. And that's about it. A great thing about gradient maps though is that you can save what you just created there. So if you really liked this, this gradient that you created, save it, press new, and it'll be there forever. Now if you wanna just color skin real quick, just apply that, real easy. Um, that's it. So you might've seen in um, some of the other um, tools that I was using this tool right here. Did I show it? Maybe I did. To select areas and kind of mask it out. So I'm going to show you guys selection tools. Um, Lasso is a great one that I use very often. Basically, wherever you draw is where you'll select. Just create a circle. As in, let your starting point meet your ending point, and whatever's in between, you would have selected it. Now, whatever you do within here stays within that circle. Unless you want to invert it, then you go back to that tool, select inverse, now wherever you affect, you want to touch, can't be inside that circle. And what's great about this tool is that there are a whole bunch of different subtools within this tool. So let's go back to selecting the face. Free transform is what you want to use. So free transform lets you push things around. I have like a duplicate of this underneath, so that's why it had another face under there. You can make it larger, pull it out. You can um, scale it while keeping it in the right proportions by holding shift, pulling it larger and smaller, then like you don't have to worry about it losing its shape. You can distort. So now you can start pulling little corners of it and change it. Now it's quagmire. You can Warp, which is very similar to Liquify. Um, I use it sometimes, I prefer Liquify. This is easier if you wanna change something that's um, maybe got its own layer. So what this does is you can just pull certain areas and it kind of warps it, similar to, to Liquify. See? Beautiful. Um, there is also, oh look, that's it. <laughs> now there are a few different other there are a few other different um, selection tools you can use. This is one that I didn't see many people use, quick selection tool. So this selects areas for you 
without like manually painting out the start and the finish you'll kind of see what I mean so I kind of clicked and dragged and it, it's selecting that face for me it's a little bit rough you can change um, the size of it so it's not so inaccurate but see like it selected the hair for me there even though I just wanted the face but it actually did a pretty good job by itself so if you hold alt it does reverse it 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 unselects all the parts that you don't want and that goes for the lasso tool as well or lasso whatever it's called let me know what it's actually called and there we go now we've selected the face real quick without having to manually draw in the circle um, another one I use just to quickly edit stuff is just the square one just quickly grab the whole thing you can free transform distort the whole thing you see easy selection tools it's a great way oh actually here's another use for it yeah say I wanted to add a shadow along this face mask it out select it and then apply that shadow with a soft brush see free shadow while keeping a nice edge on there and what you can do after adding the shadow you, you can invert maybe make this part lighter so that shadow is more apparent now so that was I'll show you guys before and after before after a real clean way of creating sharp edges to apply shadows or light whatever you want to do be creative there you go use these selection tools all right so down to the last tool um, this one is a tool that I don't think many people use it's a way to create perspective grids without downloading like additional add-ons for Photoshop I've uh, someone on discord showed me and I found it pretty useful I'm pretty sure you guys will find it useful too I'll just show you what it does so this comes with Photoshop you can set this up I'll show you how to set it up afterwards um, it creates like all these lines that converge to one point and um, yeah I'll just show you how to use it so let's just have we have a horizon line and we're gonna create a two-point perspective because that's kind of common I guess there we go We've got two points of perspective and um, to show it works let's draw some boxes um, sometimes you won't have lines where you want them that's okay because oh wait is this one okay it's a certain layer yeah just draw a point that connects to the center of that point if you know what I you know what I mean you know what I mean I hope you all know your perspective I really hope you do and there you go almost done and then just erase out any of the extra lines you created and then you got yourself a happy little box in perspective you can also draw some down here if you want that's that's your thing if you're into that kind of stuff you can be extra brave and do a box here if you want see two boxes now um, the perspective here is pretty extreme you can fix that by creating a canvas within the canvas I call this I call this technique canvas section, uh, canvas set, god damn, canvasception? Let's call it canvasception. You try to say that, it's pretty tough, alright. There you go, create two points outside of your canvas. So what I'm saying is like, you can kind of crop down to this rectangle later. There we go, and now your lines won't be that extreme anymore just draw another quick little box for you just to prove the point just to rub it in a little bit more there you go did I do this all in one yeah that's me always doing stuff on the same layer Yeah, now your perspective isn't so extreme. I'll do another box here just to show you that what I say is true. There 
There you go. Don't do it all on one layer like I did, alright? That's bad. Use layers just like what my tutorial was trying to tell you. There you go. And then you can just crop it down. And then pretend that you never used this perspective tool. Because you're just badass at perspective. You can eyeball everything. There. Yeah, it's shady because I'm special. And uh, I'll show you guys how to create this tool now. So it's pretty easy. You go to the shape tool thing here, pick a polygon, make sure this setting has star ticked, and intent, indent sides by 99%, give it like 98 sides or something. I don't know if you can make this higher. Let's, let's try. 1,000 sides. Is that going to work? Oh, okay, 100. 100 is the max. But um, make sure you have it on pixel as well, so you don't create like shapes. You create pixels like I did, so it's nice and easy to erase and all that if you want to. And that's it. There you go. Hope you found that useful. Alrighty, and that's it for my six Photoshop tools that you might have missed. Um, hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about it, drop by my Twitch. I'll, um, I'll put a link in the description so you can come drop by and just bombard me with all the questions you want uh, about life art, girls, anything. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.